Hello and welcome to Hereford Station for part three of Britain by Rail. I have just arrived here on the Transport for Wales luxury dining service. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a walk into the city centre and have a look at the cathedral. So come along with me for the journey and the journey back home via Birmingham to Stamford, my local station. So let's head into the centre of the city. As we had just missed one of the city's free zipper buses, we decided to walk the 15 minutes to the cathedral and making our way down the high street, we passed the distinctive old house. Built back in 1621 and once part of a longer row of shops, it now serves as a museum of Jacobean life. And as we continue to make our way from the station to the cathedral, we pass down one of Hereford's many medieval passageways with the magnificent 50 metre high cathedral tower soon making an appearance from above the terrace of shops. Now that we have fully emerged into the cathedral close, we are finally able to appreciate the sheer grandeur of this early English Gothic church made of the distinctive local red sandstone. The cathedral as we see it today was first begun in 1079, with the traditional date of its founding being in 696 when the Saxon building was constructed. Latterly, from 1020 to 1040, the 25th Bishop of Hereford, Athelstan, rebuilt the Saxon cathedral in stone, only for it to be destroyed 15 years later in 1055 by a rebel Welsh army. Many important manuscripts and other treasures were sadly lost in this attack, with an 8th century illuminated gospel book being the only artefact still at the cathedral to have survived. As we wander around the cathedral, notice the beautiful stained glass window dedicated to the SAS, who have been based nearby since 1960. Unlike today, Hereford Cathedral once had two towers, with the one at the West End collapsing on Easter Monday, 1789. Built to complement the central tower of 1320, it was also covered with the distinct bullflower ornament that can be seen on the exterior here. And having taken in both the cathedrals inside and outside, as well as the medieval college cloisters, we made our way to its most famous attraction, the Chained Library and Mappa Mundi. And with that we made our way into the exhibition, and considering main entrance into the cathedral is free, I'd say it's well worth paying the £6 extra in order to not miss out on the extraordinary Mappa Mundi and impressive chained library. Dating from around 1300 and drawn by Richard of Holdingham, possibly from an original Lincoln, the Hereford Mappa Mundi is the largest medieval map still known to exist, depicting the known world at the time. The map is drawn in a form deriving from the TNO pattern, with Jerusalem at its centre, Asia filling the top half, Africa in the bottom right, and Europe in the bottom left. The map features a staggering amount of detail and contains over 500 drawings, depicting 420 cities and towns, 15 biblical events, and 33 plants, animals, birds, and strange creatures. In addition to the Mappa Mundi, the exhibition also contains the world's largest chained library, consisting of about 1,500 books dating from around the year 800 to the early 19th century, including a whopping 227 medieval manuscripts. The library appears here as it would have done back in 1611 when it was first founded at Hereford Cathedral, with each of the original locks, chains and rods still remaining intact to this day. And having looked around the exhibition, we decided to head over to the Lady Chapel in the remaining time we had left before our train. 
constructed between 1217 and 1225 and once home to the chained library, it is considered one of the best surviving examples of early English architecture in any English cathedral. Another thing not to be missed in the cathedral is the elaborate Audley Chapel, with its exquisite Tudor screen said to be one of the finest in existence. And having just enough time to look at the Chantry Chapel with its superbly decorated fan vaulting and the organ dating from 1892, we sadly had to make our way out of the cathedral and back towards the railway station to make our way home. And just like that, we are back at Hereford Railway Station after a nice two hour trip into the city, into the cathedral, had a look around, really nice in there. Um, we are back at the station ready to catch the 440 train to Birmingham New Street. So let's get into the station because it started to chuck it down here. And as we dart under the canopy of Hereford Railway Station out of the rain, let's take a look at the route our journey home will take. Our journey starts with our West Midlands Railway service following the Cotswold line as far as Worcester, with intermediate stops at Ledbury, Colwall, Great Malvern, Malvern Link and Worcester Foregate Street, before it takes the line to Birmingham with its steep inclines up the Licky Hills. Upon arrival at Birmingham New Street, we then board a cross-country service along our local line with stops at Nuneaton, Leicester, Melton Mowbray, Oakham before arriving into our final destination and home stop of Stamford. Today our journey back to Birmingham New Street will be formed of two West Midlands Railway Class 196s. Built back in 2019 by Spanish manufacturer CAF, they have a top speed of 100 miles per hour and have provided a much needed upgrade to the fleet and the lines that they serve by replacing the old Class 170s. Seating on the trains is arranged in a 2 plus 2 configuration with a range of airline and table style seats. made it out of the rain into our West Midlands train which will depart at 4.40 um, from here in Hereford. Very rainy now, I mean it was horrible, got very damp walking back from the cathedral. Um, but yeah, due into Birmingham New Street where the train terminates at 10 past 6, giving us enough time to catch our onwards connection to Stamford and I think we're the only ones in the carriage on this relatively new class 196 which is quite nice for, to enjoy the journey um, back towards Birmingham so let's go. Now before we depart let's take a look at these brand new seats. To be honest I found these seats to be quite comfortable for the hour and 40 journey to Birmingham being well padded 
as well as being equipped with 3 pin and USB plug sockets, as well as big tables and real time information boards providing all details of the train service. Not long after departure, we arrived into the beautiful station at Great Malvern. Opened in 1860, it still retains most of its original Victorian station design by the architect Edmund Wallace Elmsley and is now a Grade 2 listed building. And as you can see we have made it to Birmingham New Street, a couple of minutes late on our West Midlands service from Hereford. But other than that, it was a nice journey. In the winter months, it does get dark a bit earlier, so I wasn't able to film much out the window, but still a comfortable journey on the new trains. And luckily, our train came in on platform 9B, and our onwards connecting train leaves from platform 9A. So, considering Birmingham New Street is quite a maze to navigate, we were very lucky, so no ticket barriers, or concourses to navigate just straight off the West Midlands service and up the platform to the cross country service, which hasn't arrived yet, but due to depart in about five minutes. So just waiting for it to arrive and then we'll head back to Stanford. And 12 hours later, you join me back at Stamford Station. The time's five past eight and pretty much exactly 12 hours onwards, we're back here. The journey was okay from Birmingham. Train eventually showed up about 10 minutes late, so panic over. Um, but thank you for watching part three of my Britain by Rail series. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.